Yeah. I don't even have a pin for you. And uh, just say um, the Super Bowl party and the Agape is ready. Good morning, church. Sure is great getting to hear all the wonderful fellowship. Uh, I love getting to come in and be with all of you on Sunday mornings, and uh, it's a great time. A few announcements. Uh, last day for EEM contributions today. So if you're wanting to participate in that, it's $5 per Bible, and those will be distributed to the Eastern European countries. It's a great work, so if you want to do that, please get those uh, monies over uh, to Adam now. Next Sunday, after service, James would like to meet with all of those who are participating in speeches for lads to leaders. So get with him next week after service. The Super Bowl party and Agape Breakfast is going to be in February. Details to come, so uh, keep your eyes open in the announcements and emails for that. We have two uh, big prayers we want to look at. Um, we want to pray for the snobgrasses uh, as they're having a challenge right now um, with the health issues that have been going on uh, for Bob. Uh, just pray for the family to be with them and, and to help them know what to do uh, when dealing with the situation they're in. And also, pray for the Mazers. Uh, with the loss of Nikki, there's a lot going on in their lives, and they can use our love and our support. And on that note real quick, I think uh, Derek has an announcement he needs to make briefly. Yeah, on that note, <clears throat> I just wanted to quickly um, make an announcement. Um, you, you may have seen it on Facebook if you don't have Facebook or, or not here. Uh, just wanted to, or online rather, just wanted to uh, quickly go over uh, what we're planning to do. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, opportunities out there to, to serve uh, the Mazers at this time. And <clears throat> uh, one of the things that we're going to do collectively as a church is we want uh, to give them uh, something uh, to, to help with uh, the situation there. And so we're going to um, ask that if you want to give through the church, that you uh, make out a check to the Parker Church of Christ uh, and that you put in the memo uh, benevolence uh, for, uh, or benevolence uh, Mazer family. Uh, <clears throat> we would like to kind of keep that open uh, so there's no, no necessarily a limit on uh, when we're going to uh, cut that off. But if you want to give through the church that way, you can. Um, they also have a uh, GoFundMe uh, page if you wanted to um, assist them in that, uh, that uh, way uh, with their uh, funeral arrangements and their basic needs uh, for Steve and um, uh, Melody and, and Owen. <clears throat> There's also, of course, the, uh, the uh, meal train that uh, Deanna has going, uh, and there is a uh, sign-up sheet. And if you, if you go online, if you go to our Inside the Parker Facebook page, uh, and click on the bulletin. There are links to uh, the sign-up sheet for the meals, uh, as well as their GoFundMe page. Um, but of course, uh, you can. You don't necessarily have to give in any of these ways. You can just go directly to them. It's it's just that the church is um, uh, willing to uh, also uh, collectively give something to the Mazer family in this time of need. Thank you. All right, are there any other announcements this time? Let's open the prayer to our Lord. Abba Father, we thank you for being our harbor, protecting us from the storms of life. It is our privilege and joy to praise you. As we sing, let us make a joyful noise to you. As we pray, may our words and thoughts be pleasing aroma to you. As we open your word, May we trust in your unfailing promises. Your word is true, it is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. May James be a conduit to our hearts this morning, delivering that word. And may it pierce our hearts so we may see you more clearly today. 
We thank you for your love and for your son. And it's through his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, let's sing together. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told of thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me clearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and be will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I cannot reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. I hope you all know that you are loved today. Uh, I hope you can look in fellowship with one another and feel the love of being united here today. Um, may that refresh our souls. And as we, as we walk along this pilgrim way, uh, guide me now, thou great Jehovah. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. 
I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing waters flow. Let the fiery cloudly pillar lead me all the journey through. Strong deliverer, be thou still my strength. Strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, mid my anxious fears subside, bear me thou the swelling current land me safe on Canaan's side songs of praises I will ever give to thee songs of praises I will ever give Something I often think about when it comes to be this time of every Sunday is there are a lot of times where we just go through the motions. We don't think about the steps that got us here, or maybe we think a little bit about what got us here and not about the results of how this has happened. <clears throat> Oftentimes when you're just sitting there, you think about what's going on throughout your day, what else you're going to do, or perhaps you're thinking about something else that you can overhear. <laughs> I know with my kids, I often am thinking, what are they doing? Um, but you know, at this point in time, we like to think about the actions that Christ took and the forethought that it took for him to make the sacrifices that he did, being well aware of every single result that was going to happen with each choice that he made. He had an option to choose. Well, I could just disappear here. I have an opportunity to escape now. And instead, he took himself and considered the position of life that he lived in. And instead, he made that sacrifice for us. And we take that as an opportunity to redeem ourselves. Let's pray for the bread. Oh, Father in heaven, we're so grateful for the many blessings that have been given to us. We're so grateful for this bread that has been given to us and that we are able to, through you, be made whole. Father, please allow us to consider the sins that we have made and that we can take this time to reconcile with ourselves. Father, we love you and we ask for these things in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. Father, we are so grateful to thee for the great sacrifices that your son has made for us. 
Father, we know that we are imperfect beings that make mistakes each and every single day at, it seems like, almost every moment sometimes. Father, we know that through you we can be made whole and that we can be made better if we simply strive to do so and if we simply communicate with you as much as we can. Father, please bless us that we can be reminded of these things constantly and that we can remember that the closer we draw to you, the easier it is to stay near to you. Father, we love you, and we ask for these things in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Separate from the Lord's Supper, we also take this time to consider the many blessings that we have been given and to consider the work that is done here at the church. Father, we know that we are, <laughs> Father, we know that we have a lot of people in this congregation that are hurting, that are in need. We also think about all of those that are not within our fold that are currently living throughout their lives that are making choices that are going to lead them to a place that well, we don't really want to talk about it, to be honest. And we use the funds that are given to us not only to help those that are within us, but to help those that are hurting, but to also help reach out to those that may never have received knowledge without us reaching out. Each and every day we have that opportunity, but as a church body, we're able to concentrate funds to make solid efforts to do things like our parties and our barbecues that sometimes seem just like, you know, it's a, fam it's a church family gathering, but they're also great opportunities to bring other people in that maybe we're friends with or whatever else. And that's what we put this money towards. Let us pray for this offering. Father, we're so grateful to live in a place that we do and to live in the situations that we do, Father. We know that sometimes times may seem hard for us, but the times for many others are so much harder. Father, please bless us that we can remember these things as we make our choices to help give to the church and to help work towards bringing us to a better understanding with each other and also to bring those that may not understand, Father. Please bless that we'll be able to use these wisely and that we'll be able to have great blessings brought onto us and brought onto others by the use of these funds. Father, please bless us, and we love you in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The next song is actually in your songbook. So 446, Hero Ears or Ael. And it occurred to me as I picked these songs out that they kind of follow the, the story of Joshua, which is fitting since... That's what we're doing for Lads the Leaders, and I've been reading a lot of Joshua lately. Um, <clears throat> but there's such a story of that deliverance from Egypt and crossing the Jordan into the Promised Land, and as we've just taken, that Christ has done that just for us uh, and has given us something great. And I thank you that we can celebrate that together. But we're going to sing 446, Hero Israel, uh, a reminder that they would sing or they would say to themselves that, uh, uh, and they would repeat in Deuteronomy. Let's sing together. Hero Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy soul, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy strength. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy mind. Hear, O Israel, thou 
shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy soul. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy strength. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy might. Hear, O Israel. Songs keep resetting. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> where no one stands alone. Once I stood in the night with my head bowed low in the darkness as black as could be. And my heart felt alone, and I cried, Oh, Lord, don't hide your face from me. Hold my hand all the way, every King, I may live in a palace so tall with great riches to call my own, but I don't know a thing in this whole. worse than being alone. Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the grave. Scripture reading today will be John 14, verses 1 through 4. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to, per go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way... And you know the way where I'm going. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning. And 
As you know, there's a couple of pews that are normally filled up uh, are vacant this morning because uh, the, the youth group is planned for a youth rally this morning. Um, and so uh, they should be coming uh, uh, back later today. So keep them in, in your prayers that they've had a, uh, a good time, that they have been encouraged uh, by other Christians uh, their age and have had a great weekend. And, and may, be sure to thank uh, Kyle and uh, Steve uh, when they get back for taking them up here uh, and all the things that uh, uh, they do as well as Kyle and Tiffany uh, that they do for uh, the youth group uh, as well. So we're looking forward to seeing them uh, back here this evening. All right, who here is getting old? I think, I think all of us, right? I mean, even the young ones, you know, who is, Britain says no. Uh, he's taking some sort of uh, some um, something health thing that's, I guess, keeping him young. Although he does, I see some gray in his beard, so I think he is getting old. Uh, yeah, we're we're all getting old. Um, who has lost a job? We're not as quick to raise our hands on that one, huh? I've I've lost a job. Uh, who's lived? Pain? Who's been concerned about where the next paycheck is going to come? Who's been concerned about food on the table? About what was going to be on next, the morning's breakfast or dinner? Who has lost someone? Who has lost someone unexpectedly? Who's lost someone too soon? Who spent time in the hospital? Who suffers from chronic pain? Who suffers from anxiety and depression and all these things? I mean, you know, you look around and uh, you know, some of those things, those questions, you know, we nodded our head. Some of those things we didn't want to respond, but we knew that the answer was in the affirmative, that yes, we've done that, we've had that. And, and I want you to know, first of all, before we get into the lesson, that there were a lot of people in here that have suffered from all of those things. As far as the church family goes, you're not alone. There's so many people that have suffered from those exact things, and collectively, I would say the majority of us in here suffered multiple, uh, have, had, have had to worry about those questions. And have answered yes, maybe some of you answered yes to every single one. And it can be a difficult place for us to find ourselves. That's in part why God provided for his church, provided the church for this family, because collectively we do go through things over and over again. We suffer from those things. We have concern for those things. We have worry for those things. We are Interesting, many of those things, not all of them, but many the disciples were concerned about. The disciples of Jesus, Jesus, the specific disciples of Jesus, that is the 12, actually the 11 now in this room that we, uh, we find ourselves in the text in, in John chapter 13 and then in John chapter 14. At this point, there are 11 disciples left. Judas has left to do what he wants to do to betray Jesus. Jesus has told his disciples several times now that he is going to go and be killed. Recently he has said how that is going to be done, that he's going to be crucified by Gentiles. These disciples have been following Jesus for three and a half years. Guess what happens if Jesus is no longer there for them, from their perspective. They have been following Jesus and they have been provided for. They have been led. They have been fed. They're losing someone in their minds unexpectedly. They're losing someone in their minds too soon. 
They're going to wake up tomorrow morning and then they're going to have their provider, their leader, their shepherd, their friend, their Messiah, their physical king, which they think is going to be placed on the throne soon. And he's going to be gone. These men left jobs that were providing for them financially. They were providing for their family physically. And now they have followed Jesus for three to three and a half years. And now if he's killed, what happens? Everything they had anticipated is coming to an end. The plans that they had are coming to an end. You know, the, the, the saying in our house is, we plan like we, we are going to have our change. Plans changed. That was a dyslexic moment. We plan like we're going to have our plans changed. Any, anybody have some plans changed recently? All the time. It seems even more, uh, more uh, prevalent now. It's, you know, hey, we're going to do something. We're going to meet up with these people. Oh, you know what? They're sick. Gonna have my whole family out for Christmas. Oh, COVID. Things change all the time. And the plans that these disciples had, now, although they were wrong, they were still expecting them to come to fruition. They were concerned, as we talked about in John chapter 13 in, 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 uh, in corresponding gospels, we're talking about how they were concerned about who was going to be on the right and on the left. They were concerned about who was greatest among them. And then they were concerned about, well, who's the one that's going to betray him? And then all of a sudden, these plans are all going to change. And those changes are going to start to take effect tonight. And the disciples are going to be involved. One's already betrayed him. One is about to deny him. And the others are going to go into hiding because their life has been disruptive and they don't know where they're going to go to next. Jesus, knowing this, responds in John chapter 14 with these words. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. There are three verses here in this text, in this, these six verses here, that were, are extremely important in what Jesus said to them. Not that all of them are not. But there's something that he wanted to know. And you notice in John chapter 14, verse 1, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. He's going to go on to say in John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you. This is all in the same conversation. Peace I leave with you, my grace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Drop down to chapter 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. <clears throat> Look also at John chapter 16, verse 32. He says, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. The first thing that he says that is also important for us to hear is do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. 
Jesus knows exactly what is going to happen the next day. Jesus knows exactly what is going to happen with him on the cross. And he's trying to explain this to the disciples, and his disciples are not. It just doesn't make sense to him. You ever been met with something in life where it just doesn't make sense? Why are things going this way? It just doesn't make sense. Why does this have to be this way? Why is it so unfair? I don't understand. Disciples, disciples didn't understand. They didn't understand. This doesn't make sense. This is ridiculous. Jesus, you are not going to the cross. You're not going to be killed. This is not what I had planned. This is not what I was preparing for. This is not what I was following you for, Jesus. This whole time we were following you, following you to be at your right and at your left, to be in the kingdom here. This is not what we had planned. Why are you changing the plans, Jesus? And so Jesus knows what's going through their minds. And so he says, do not be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. And what does he respond? What is the next thing that he says with that? Here is how, brethren, here is how Jesus wants them to be enabled to not let their heart be troubled. Notice what he says next. Believe in God, believe also in me. I think that's one of the first things that leave our mind when we struggle, when we are troubled in heart, when we are suffering. The first thing that we forget is about he who is greater than us. It's the first thing that slips our mind. And so Jesus reminds them of this situation. Yes, I've just told you that I am going to be crucified, that I'm going to be put on the cross. But remember who is greater than this. Remember who you believe in, and you also believe in me. Because the thing, too, that you know, they, they're just not grasping as, as well, and they, and they seem to miss, at least from, uh, from that written in the Bible, is Jesus does tell them that he's going to be raised on the third day, doesn't he? He's told them that. But that, that's not in their mindset. That's not in their, in, 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 you know, in their way of thinking, because none of this makes sense to them. So they can't even fathom that, well, this is not even going to happen. So we're not even going to worry about the, resu the resurrection. What? The first thing he says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me also. It reminds me of the prophet Habakkuk. And in that first ch chapter, he is talking to God. He's arguing with God. He's mad. He's angry with all the things that are going on in the world around him and what's happening. He cannot believe it. And so he prays to God and he is arguing with God and he's mad that God is letting all this sin and all these things happen. And God's response would, is, you wouldn't believe what I'm doing if I told you. You wouldn't believe it. And the disciples are kind of in a similar situation here. Where Jesus has just told them, I'm going to be crucified. How could you let that happen? Why would you let that happen, Jesus? Why would you let that happen? God, why would you let your son, the Messiah, why would you let him be crucified by Gentiles? That makes no sense. How would you let this horrible atrocity, this sin amongst all sins, take place? Not you, God. It seems ridiculous. It seems awful. Why would God let his son be crucified? And Jesus is telling his disciples almost the same thing that God tells Habakkuk, and that is, believe me, trust me. And right now you don't understand if I'm telling you. Jesus has been telling them. But they don't comprehend, they don't quite understand even, as, even 
even when they've been told by Jesus, this is what's happening, and it's all part of God's plan. We find ourselves in a situation where we are troubled in heart, and we are suffering with whatever might be causing us to suffer. We forget that there's a bigger picture that God is working through with his plan that has already been given to us in Christ. So he says, the first thing he says, is, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The second important part of this in this text is the very next verse. In my father's house, are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. He says there in verse 2, in my father's house are many dwelling places. Now in the King James, uh, that's where we get the idea of a mansion. And I think that the idea there, then why they uh, made that word, excuse me, made that word a mansion was because there were many rooms and when you think about many rooms, lots of places, you think about a mansion. A mansion is huge. It's a huge house that has all these, uh, all these rooms, and so there's plenty of room. But it's really not, the idea really is not a mansion. The more specific point is there is enough room for everybody. There is a place for everyone. It's a dwelling place. It's a place, and the idea is, is a place where you go to remain, where you go to stay. Where you're not going to have your life disrupted anymore. Everybody, anybody move a lot? Move around? You know, it used to be that just military and, and, and preachers' families moved. Now everybody seems to move, and some people because they enjoy it. But there's something to be said about having a place where you have roots, where you've been there. My, my parents still live in the house I came home to after I was born. That's not normal. And I go home, and they've messed it all up. They changed everything in that house. They redid a bunch. It doesn't even look like the house I grew up in, so it doesn't even matter anymore. Uh, no, uh, sorry, a little personal problem. Um, but you, know, you, you go, and, and you, have, you have that place where you remain, and you stay, and it's home. And of course, it's, course, it's home because of what? Where you want to stay and remain is because of what? Is it because of where you're at? Or is it because of something else? Look with me back in John chapter 14. Verse 2, he says, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to replay, uh, uh, prepare a place for you. Verse 3, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There's... The excitement about the place that we're going to remain is that who's there? Jesus is there. Jesus is there. And, you know, from their perspective, they're losing him now. They're losing him. But he's here saying, hey, I'm going to prepare a place There's in my father's house. Remember earlier in John chapter 13, as he's getting prepared to wash the disciples' feet, John says he knows what's happening tomorrow. He knows where he's going, and he's knowing that he's going back to the Father. John chapter 13, verse 3 tells us he knows he's going back to the Father. And John 14, verse 3 corroborates in my Father's house, or verse 2, in my Father's house are many dwelling places, and I'm going to go there and prepare a place for you. And so he's going to be with the Father. And so ultimately, Ultimately, we can see in this, and we know this, but it's kind of neat to connect these dots here, that Jesus, knowing that he's going back to the Father, and then knowing he's told us, I'm going to come back for you, and then I'm going to take you to that place. 
and there I will be also. And so who's going to be there? The Christians, those that are saved, not all just Christians, there are going to be people from the Old Testament that are going to be there. Those who are faithful to God, Jesus, and God the Father. It's a family reunion. They're going to be reunited with the one that they are about to lose. These are the words that Jesus is giving to his disciples so their hearts will not be troubled. Believe in God, believe in also, believe that they're, believe beyond what's going to happen. Trust God. And I'm going to go to him, the Father, and I'm going to come back and then take you with me to this place that I'm preparing. So then he says in verse 4, and you know the way where I am going. And Thomas speaks up here It probably is something that all of the disciples are thinking. To him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And Jesus said to him, I am the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. And here is the last important verse here that we need to take into consideration, really think about it in in the context of do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, trust in this plan that I'm going to prepare a place that has many rooms for you and you will remain there and you know how to get there. You know how to get there. While I've never, my my wife will attest to this too, so it's not just just me saying this. I've never been lost while driving, but I hate not having directions. I'll get there. You might meander around to get it, but I've never been lost. I've always known where I'm at. Right, guys? Other guys are like, yeah, that's me too. Totally. Never been lost. But directions are good to have, right, guys? I mean, regardless of what our wife says, you know, and, and, and we argue about, we do like to know where we're going. We do like to have directions, even if they're in our minds, You know, and it takes us a while to get there. Uh, You know, we like to have directions. Well, Jesus is giving them the exact way to get to this place that he is going to, that he is going to come back from, that he's preparing for them, and then going to bring them back to. He is giving them the exact, specific directions. You look up, you look up on your, your GPS on your phone and you, know, you, you put in uh, you know, the, the address and I don't understand, why, why does the GPS give you a bunch of different options? Don't we all want the fastest option? Can't we just assume I want the direct, I want the direct option? Why do you give me all these other options? I want the direct route. Ah, got it, I'm getting good. I want the direct route. I want, to, I want the direct way. I don't want to pass go. I don't want to collect $200, right? I want to go right to the spot to be there. Jesus says there's one way. There aren't multiple routes. There is only way, one way. And this is the best way. It is the fastest way. It is the only way. He is the way. And the emphasis, I think, while it says he is the truth and the life, the emphasis is on the way, which is, be, and he's the way because he is the truth and the life. Remember, remember, uh, uh, um, Thomas just asked, well, how, tell us the way, how do we go? And Jesus says, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. Despite what you are going to face tomorrow, disciples, you have way. Believe in me. Believe also in God. Know that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I think 
that part of that preparation, really, I think sometimes, you know, we might think, oh, you know, well, Jesus is, a, you know, he was a carpenter by trade, right? He built things. And so he is going to go and Jesus is up there for the last, you know, uh, 2000s of years, you know, uh, building things and building us rooms that are going to stand for eternity. I think part of, if not the preparation, is really the way in which he, he made through his crucifixion on the cross. He prepared this place that now we can get to through him. Part of that preparation is Christ's work on the cross. He enables us now to get to that place through him. Through him. And there's plenty of room for all of those who choose to follow that way. That's the point he's trying to make because remember, the disciples, what were they concerned about? They were, they were concerned about their place with Christ. I want to be on the left. I want to be on the right. Are we going to be able to live in the, in, in the same palace with you, uh, God? Are we going to be able to take the cups of victory and cheer in the great you know, victory palace a room? Are we all going to be able to be there? Jesus says, yeah, there's plenty of room for all of you to have a place to remain where I am with the Father. The disciples are going through a lot of what we go through today. The next day, Jesus is no longer, in their minds, Jesus is no longer leading them. The people who have been giving to Jesus, that have been helped supporting him, those people that have been giving money to them. That's why they had a treasurer in Judas. People were giving to them, providing for them. They had money. They had a treasurer that was there to keep track of the money so they could buy themselves food. And all of a sudden, that is gone tomorrow. Where are we going to be? Who is going to lead us? Who is going to shepherd us? Who is going to provide for us? And we just lost. We just lost the man we love the most. These verses, while specifically in context, are here for the disciples, they're here for us too. They're here for us too. So when you find yourself in any number of those situations that I asked you about at the beginning, those questions, or something beyond that. Think of these words as though Jesus is saying them to you. Because he is saying these in such a way where it's written, where it's like he's talking to them individually, not as a group. He is looking at one, he's looking at Peter, and he says, Peter, do not let your heart be troubled. Then he's looking over here at John. He's saying, John, do not let your heart be troubled. Thomas, Thomas, do not let your heart be troubled. And so in a very similar way, he's looking at us. He's talking to us individually. He's calling our names. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe in God, believe also in me. So for I go to prepare a place, a dwelling place for you. And I wouldn't tell you, I wouldn't tell you this if it weren't true. He, he says this, you know, maybe because in, in the back of their minds, like, I don't know, I don't know where you're going. There's going to be, a, we can't go though. Well, I, I don't understand. And Jesus is calling on has, have they ever had to doubt him before? When he says, I wouldn't tell you this if it wasn't true. Don't doubt me now. You haven't doubted me this whole time. Don't start doubting me now. I wouldn't tell you this if it weren't true. And don't forget that he knows the way to this place where God and where Jesus and where the family of God will be reunited. 
once and for all and will remain there. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way to the place that he is preparing. Jesus is the way to the place where we will remain forever. And so we see in his gospels, we see in all these accounts where we are to believe that Jesus is the way. The problem that we have is that we are sinful and that we find ourselves full of sin. But Jesus is the way to forgiveness of those sins. So Peter told the disciples there after they understood they were guilty of the murder of you may be out there sitting I like to remind people about this you may be out there sitting uh, thinking that you are full of a lot of different sins and you say James I cannot begin to tell you the sins that are in my life you would you would cringe if I begin to tell you all the sins that are in my life well, I like to point out that these people here in, in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 that he talked about, uh, that Peter was speaking to, were the very ones that were guilty of the murder of the Son of God. I would suggest to you that's pretty heavy sin. Yet they were able to be forgiven. Jesus' blood is that strong, is that power? He told those disciples, you believe, repent, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. For the forgiveness of your sins. Those sins will be forgiven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And we are blessed with that knowledge. Do not let your hearts be troubled, brethren. Believe in God. Believe also in him. Let us stand and sing. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer are we weak and Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do the friends for sights forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. 
Thank you, James, for that thumb, I mean message. Uh, nobody noticed your big thumb you had today, but um, seriously, thank you for reminding us that Jesus is preparing a place for us. We have a growing list of people that need, we need to remember to keep in our prayers. Be sure and look on our bulletin uh, if you didn't see it on our inside Facebook for Parker. Uh, we have copies back there on the back table. We especially want to welcome and thank all of our visitors that were here with us today. We're glad you're here. Uh, this is a great family. So just so you know, if, you, if you're here three times, you're a member. But we'll make that official somewhere down the road. We do want to recognize uh, Rex and Cheryl Pendergraf. Uh, they have asked to be recognized as uh, members and want to work with us here. So be sure and uh, welcome them after services. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time of worship and praise. And we offer it up to you, Father, and hope that it was pleasing to you today. Father, thank you for this family that you've established here in Parker. We're so blessed to have uh, ministers like James who can bring your message to us and uh, help remind us that your, your son is preparing a place for us. And uh, with all the sufferings of this life, uh, we have much to look forward to. Father, I ask that you would forgive us of our sins, and as we go out this week, help us to share the good news of your Son, our Savior, and uh, let others know uh, why we're so happy and blessed to live in this uh, ever-challenging world. Father, be with the uh, teens as they return back this afternoon from Cheyenne, keep them safe, give them safe travels. Be with those that are, are at home, shut in, those that are recovering from um, surgery or sil illness, uh, be it physical or spiritual, Father, and help us to always encourage each other and to lift each other up. Help us, Father, to and give us safe travels home and help us to return this evening for our, our family focus time and uh, fellowship and it's in your son's name jesus christ that we pray amen <laughs> 